Hello friends, welcome back to all about structural analysis and design. I am Swati Joshi, colleague of Avijit Sir. I will be explaining here few of the clauses of IS 456 2000. Welcome you to the series for the IS 456 2000. Sir has already explained few of the clauses on the plain and reinforced cement concrete. So if you like our content, so please do like share and subscribe to all about structural analysis and design. We will be explaining regarding clause number 14, concrete under special conditions. So whenever we have to do the concreting under the special conditions, there are different methods which we have to follow with respect to the code. So here in clause number 14.1, we have regarding the work in the extreme weather conditions. The concreting work in the extreme weather conditions, either it may be hot weather condition or it may be cold weather conditions. The hot weather conditions we have to refer for IS 7861 part 1. So, wherein the temperature if it is around 40 degrees Celsius and above, then how the concreting has to be done, the various clauses and the rules have been given in IS 7861 part 1. And when I talk about the cold weather conditions, we have to refer to IS 7861 part 2, wherein if the temperature is below the 5 degrees Celsius, then that is the cold weather conditions. That time, what are the clauses which we have to refer is being given in IS 7861 part 2. So, there are different extreme conditions which we have to undergo. That time, how the concreting has to be done has been given in your IS 456-2000 in the clause number 14. In clause 14.2, we have underwater concreting. So, whenever we have to go for the underwater concreting, certain measures have to be taken care. So, here in 14.2.1 clause, the code has been mentioned that when it is necessary to deposit certain concrete underwater, methods, equipment, materials, Proportions to the, to the mix has to be submitted and approved by the engineer in charge before the work has to be started. Then regarding underwater concreting, the slump has to be maintained as given in the clause number 7.1. So friends, in the clause 7.1 for the concreting underwater construction, the trainee method, here the degree of workability is very high. For the trimi underwater construction, the workability of the concrete has been given as very high and they have told us to refer the clause 7.1.2. So, in 7.1.2, in very high category of workability, the measurement of workability by determination of flow has to be referred with respect to IS 9103. So, with respect to 9103, we have to refer for the workability conditions of the underwater concreting. So, the code specifies that the water cement ratio should not exceed 0.6. Depending upon the type of water present and the chemical attack, it has to be either less than the 0.6 and it should not be going to be greater than 0.6. For aggregate 40 mm maximum particle size, the cement content shall be at least 350 kg per meter cube of concrete. So, clause 14.2.3 says that coffer dams or forms shall be sufficiently tight to ensure still water if practicable. So, what are the coffer dams? Coffer dams are the temporary or the permanent structures provided near the bridge piers or the excavations to have the dry surface for the concreting work. So, the code mentions that the coffer dam or the forms shall be sufficiently tight to ensure the still water if practicable and in any case to reduce the flow of water is less than 3 meter per minute through the space into which the concreting is to be deposited. The coffer dams or form in still water shall be sufficiently tight to prevent the loss of mortar through the walls. The coffer dams wherein the underwater concreting has to be done has to be 
sufficiently tight so that there is no loss of motor. Dewatering by the pumping shall not be done while the concreting is placed or until 24 hours thereafter. Concrete cast under water should not fall freely through the water, otherwise it may be leached and become segregated. So we have to see through it that the concreting work done in the underwater concreting should not undergo any segregation, wherein the heavy materials like the sand and the aggregates settle down and the water and the cement tries to come on the top, that is your segregation. So it should see to it that there is no segregation during the work. Concrete shall be deposited continuously until it is brought to the required height. There should be continuous flow of concrete. While depositing, the top surface shall be kept as nearly as level as possible and the formation of seams is avoided. The different methods for underwater concreting are the trimming method, direct placement with pumps, drop bottom bucket, bags and grouting. So in this video, we shall see regarding the trimming method. So what is a trimming method? So trimming method looks something like this, wherein we will be having a hopper and a pipe through which the concreting is going to be carried out. So, we have a hopper and a trimmy pipe. From the hopper, the continuous flow of concrete takes place and it has to be brought to the bottom surface. We should see to it that the bottom surface is a hard stratum and the pipe has been reaching to the nearby to the hard stratum. Then, there has to be continuous flow of concrete in there. So, the top of the pipe is connected to the hopper, trimmy feed hopper. Here the bottoms are connected with the pipes which have been safely locked with the help of the valves. As the continuous flow of concreting takes place, so this ensures that the concrete which is present inside is not coming in contact with the water. So now let us see what are the clauses given in the IS456. 2000. So, in the clause 14.2.4, which explains regarding the trimming method, the concrete is placed through a vertical pipes, the lower end of which is always inserted sufficiently deep into the concrete, which has been placed previously but has not yet set. The concrete emerging from the pipe pushes the material that has already been placed to the side and upwards and thus does not come into direct contact with the water. So as you see in the photograph there, so previously placed concrete is present wherein and after that when the flow of concreting takes place, the concrete which is present over here inside is not coming in contact with the water. That we have to ensure during the trimmy method. So the code book says that, when the concrete is to be deposited under water by means of trimmy, the top section of the trimmy shall be a hopper large enough to hold one entire batch of the mix or the entire content, the transporting bucket if any. So for the concreting work, the hopper has to be sufficiently big wherein it can, con it can take enough the entire batch of the mix. So the trimmy pipe shall not be less than 200 mm in diameter and shall be large enough to allow free flow of concrete and strong enough to withstand the external pressure of water in which it is suspended. So the trimmy pipe shall not be less than 200 mm and it has to take care that the flow of concrete is continuous there. So the pipe should not be less than 200 mm. The length of the pipe can be easily increased or decreased by using coupling. A funnel is provided at the top end of the pipe to facilitate the pouring of concrete. The bottom end is closed with a plug or thick polythene sheet to prevent the entry of water into the pipe. The pipe is lowered and is made to rest at the point. The length of the pipe can be easily increased or decreased by using coupling. The funnel is provided 
at the top end to facilitate the pouring of the concrete. The bottom end is closed with the plug or thick polythene sheet to prevent entry of water into the pipe. The pipe is lowered and made to rest at a point where the concrete is going to be placed. When the whole length of the pipe is filled with the concrete, the trimmy pipe is lifted up and a slight jerk, the plug is forced out and the concrete get discharged. After the concreting has started, the lower end of the trimmy should be kept as deeply submerged in the previously placed concrete to prevent the entry of water into the pipe from the bottom end. The trimmy should be lifted slowly to permit the concrete flow out. Care has to be taken not to lose the seal at the bottom. In this way, the concrete work is progressed without stopping till the concreting level comes above the water level. So, they say that the trimmy should be lifted slowly to permit the concrete flow. And care has to be taken so that we are not going to lose any seal at the bottom. In this way, the concrete work is progressed without stopping till the concrete level comes above the water level. It will be necessary to raise slowly the trimmy in order to cause a uniform flow of concrete, but the trimmy shall not be emptied so that the water enters the pipe. At all times, after the placing of concrete is started and until all the concrete is placed, the lower end of the trimmy pipe shall be below the top surface of the plastic concrete. This will cause the concrete to build up from below instead of flowing out over the surface and thus avoiding the formation of the lightens layers. So, they say that there should be continuous flow of concreting and after some concrete has been placed here, we have to slowly lift up the pipe and allow the flow of concrete to be continuously. So, like this, the process has to be continued until the concrete is going to come above the water level. We have to make ensure that there has to be a hard stratum at the below. Either the plastic polythene has to be provided and the concrete which is placed inside is not coming in contact with the water. There are some precautions which have to be taken for the trimmy method. They are the coffer dams or the forms should be sufficiently tight. Dewatering during the concreting or during 24 hours of the concreting work, there should not be any pumping. Once the concreting has started, the trimmy should not be removed or moved laterally to the deposited concrete as this will cause the disturbance to the concrete. If there is any necessary to shift the trimmy, it has to be lifted out, moved to the topper position. All the time, the lower end of the trimmy pipe should be kept well embedded in the wet concrete. Once the concreting has started, the trimmy should not be moved laterally through the deposited concrete as this will gain disturbance to the concrete. As the concreting gets automatically compacted by the hydrostatic pressure of water, high water ratio is required for the high consistency which reduces the strength of the concrete. We will be having different methods of underwater concrete in the coming videos. Thank you friends.